a long, spotted, sinewy body with all four limbs in air against an arid backdrop. This is the cheetah, the fastest terrestrial animal on Earth, capable of galloping at speeds of up to 100 km per hour. The cheetah, which was extinct in the 1950s in India, is about to make a comeback later this year. About 10 cheetahs, five of them females, will be brought to Madhya Pradesh's Kono Palpur Wildlife Sanctuary in November. And while this is good news for wildlife aficionados, it need not have to be this at all in the first place. Why? For that, let us start from the beginning. The cheetah is no stranger to India. India was once the final point in the arc of its range extending to Iran and Africa. In fact, the very word cheetah is of Sanskrit origin meaning variegated, adorned, or painted. South Asia's love affair with the spotted cat reached its apogee in the Middle Ages. Let us hear it from the foremost historian of India's cheetahs. The earliest historical references I find are in classical Greek records of India from Strabo about, about 200 years before, uh, before the Common Era. Coming down up to the Mughal period, the cheetahs were used very extensively uh, for hunting. Emperor Akbar had 1,000 cheetahs in his menagerie. Central India, particularly the Gwalior region, had cheetahs uh, for a very long time. And in fact, various states, including Gwalior state and Jaipur state, used to uh, uh, hunt with cheetahs. And Jaipur state used to obtain cheetahs from Gwalior state. That means the area where we are talking of there present reintroduction. All that ended one day in 1947, when this man, Maharaja Ramanuj Pratap Singh, of a small princely state in today's Chhattisgarh, shot India's last three surviving cheetahs. The animal was declared officially extinct in the Republic of India in 1952. The plan to reintroduce the cheetah in India began as soon as it was declared extinct. However, its first solid steps were taken in the 1970s, during negotiations with Iran, then under Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. Iran's cheetahs were Asiatic, like India's extinct animals. Let us listen about this cheetah diplomacy from the man who was part of it. Well, in 72, the Wildlife Protection Act had been passed and uh, Mrs. Gandhi was the Prime Minister and very keen on wildlife. And so, uh, the idea was that uh, since cheetah was the one big animal, one large mammal we had lost, since uh, the Asiatic cheetah was only in Iran and the Asiatic lion, Panthera leo persica, Persian lion, was in India, it would be a good idea if we exchanged, we had about the same number of animals at that point of time. Um, matter was uh, very well uh, received by Iran. So the deal had been struck uh, that we would exchange lands for cheetah. And one had the approval of the, the, the Prime Minister and all that. Uh, but we were not yet ready. We had not established any uh, protected areas. We were in the process of doing so and upgrading them to be suitable for the cheetah. So while this was going on, uh, the emergency was declared in Delhi. So the matter was held up and uh, very soon thereafter, the regime of the Shah of Iran fell and uh, the protection uh, which uh, the cheetah and its prey and its habitat was getting dissolved and the cheetah population simply plummeted down to the present uh, um, situation where they are certainly less than 15, probably less than 30. So that was the scenario at that point of time. Another attempt to source Iranian cheetahs was made in 2009 without success. Iran would not permit even cloning of its cheetahs. 
many years ago we didn't know how to translocate an animal how to anesthetize to, to uh, capture and to, and to uh, rehabilitate uh, a number of other species but now we've learned so if we learn the ropes and if the two governments are agreeable i think uh, we can at some point of time help iran in saving their kita that would be a vision one september day in 2009 the then environment minister jairam ramesh convened a meeting in gajner rajasthan to discuss the issue again experts argued in favor of bringing in cheetahs from southern africa they also shortlisted a number of potential sites for cheetah reintroduction let us listen to one of those experts these reserves are large and um the cheetahs coming in are used to being around leopards you know and lions and hyenas so they are not um naive so it will be an experiment which is um an important experiment that india is taking forward so we can't really make any guarantees um it is a numbers game so a number of animals are going to be needed with high hope that reproduction um occurs and that there will be some that will survive so in a perfect ecosystem like the serengeti we do even see about a 90% um loss of cubs in those areas so um we can't do much worse than that i hope an unusual event in may 2012 put spoke in the wheel when the supreme court ordered a stay on the reintroduction project senior advocate ps narasimha court appointed advisor and the amicus curiae in the asiatic lions relocation case in the apex court had filed an application seeking a stay well the ecosystem that's there the grassland ecosystems are a very vulnerable um grassland with that you've got a certain kind of species that are on these grassland plains and those are the species that the cheetah will be not only hunting but as it hunts it also will be providing leftover of its kills to the other species that are within those systems it then increases those numbers of animals by having food for them you know it's kind of a a, a simplistic way of looking at it but as you start increasing your biodiversity within these ecosystems by having more animals and plants and insects and birds um then your biodiversity is much greater as well and the top predators do help with this especially the cheetah because the cheetah actually feeds other animals finally in january 2020 things started moving with the impetus of india's national tiger conservation authority itself and in april this year a south african expert visited four potential sites kuno palpur nora dehi wls gandhi sagar wls and madhav national park The NTCA will be releasing funds to the tune of rupees 1400 lakhs to the Wildlife Institute of India this month to implement the project. If everything falls into place this time, Kuno will host four big cats: lions, tigers, cheetahs, and leopards. But can these animals coexist comfortably in the same habitat? This has never occurred anywhere else before. The cheetah reintroduction will definitely be a boon for wildlife tourism but it may also pose a threat to the intraspecies and human wildlife conflict. <laughs>